meeting to order at 5.30 p.m. Clerk, will please call the roll. Chairman Lebelin. Present. Present. Councilor Harris. Present. Councilor Diane Lebelin. Present. Councilor Mackin. Councilor Ocampo. Present. You have four present, one absent. You have a four. Thank you very much. Um, Council of Blank would like to move mm -hmm. approval of the minutes from April 6, 2019. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Mm -hmm. We need to take the matter of the resolution uh, protecting you from the dangers of using tobacco and making yeah. resolution from the table. Council of Blank has the floor and you have heard the sense of the motion. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? I move to hear from all off committee members, uh, member of the health, members of the health department, uh, members of the uh, board of health, and uh, representatives um, from the um, MMA, Mr. DJ Wilson, and uh, if any of the other representatives. That's my motion. You've heard a sense of the motion. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? I want to thank everybody for coming tonight. This resolution, um, it's been on the docket for a little bit. It was originally brought in um, by myself and the uh, immediate past chairman of the Public Works and Public Safety Committee, uh, Councillor Carlos Vidal, um, but several other councillors had signed on to it as well. And <coughs> Uh, Councilor Vidal and I initiated it, moved it forward um, in large part because we are active what's currently being called the um, Waltham Partnership for Youth Coalition. But its history is the um, Waltham Youth and Community Coalition and prior to that the Waltham Safe Schools Coalition and uh, again more recently there's just been an awful lot of dialogue around um, the use of flavored tobacco products and vaping. And um, my dialogue actually goes back to the former director, um, uh, Director Zupe, who was um, you know, very gracious in going over a lot of things with me um, and explaining things. Um, and uh, he had even offered to come in to one of the uh, one of the partnership meetings, right? To you know answer any questions they had, but for whatever reason that didn't come together. Um, so again, Council Vidal and I brought in um, the resolution so that we would have an opportunity to kind of get a handle on what's the state of affairs in the city of Waltham with regard to tobacco regulations um, and uh, in particular our concern being the youth. Um, who has what authority? Is it the Board of Health? Is it the City Council? Who should be doing what? Um, so, I, you know, I do have some questions and again, you know, I, I had expressed to my colleagues, again, so grateful that you all are here because the council recognizes we have no authority over the Board of Health. You're an independent entity, um, and uh, again, you know, your, your, your participation here is greatly appreciated. Michelle, perhaps this is, this is your board, perhaps you could introduce them. I'd be more than happy to. To my left, I have Bernie Molly. Beside Bernie is Susan Panadosi. I have Bill Hanley, and in front of me is Dr. Larner, and with me to my right is my assistant, Tommy Crianti. Excellent, excellent. Um, so, in terms, and, and I don't know how many you know DJ Wilson, if, if you could introduce yourself. To sure, I'm DJ Wilson. I've been the Tobacco Control Director at Mass Municipal Association for 25 years. Okay. Um, you know, this, this is been in, in the news a lot lately, right? Um, even very recently, the Boston City Council is discussing um, how can they limit the sale of flavored tobacco products to kids. So it, 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 I'm not sure, Michelle, who would like to sort of talk about this issue from public health uh, department perspective. What regulations you've put in place, what regulations you've 
you know, chosen not to, and, and, and what might be those reasons? Our regulations, um, this was done through John Zuppi and the board back a couple years ago anyway, and what we have is for the sale of tobacco, any type of nicotine device for the age of 21, that is the only part that we have adopted. There are five, I believe, five um, pieces that you can adopt, but at the time, they just adopted the age of 21 for the sale of it. Okay. Okay, and that's in the regs. I didn't bring a copy of our regs for everybody. I'm sorry. I apologize for that. But I do have a copy here with me. Okay. And, and you were kind enough to send um, a list of mm -hmm. all of the establishments in the city that, um, you know, have a license to sell tobacco Correct. products. Yes, 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 and yes. I didn't initiate that request. That request actually came from um, the youth on um, the Walden Partnership for Youth Coalition. And, and, and I'm just, I'm seeing now um, that what I was sent, it's got page one and page four. And there's no page two and page three. Oh, so and so maybe, I don't know why. And since they're not, I mean, I can't, it, this may in fact be all of it. There's 67 all together in the city of, 67 okay, all so together in the city of Waltham. Do you have two pages or do you have four? Only two pages. Okay, all right. All right I don't so know what the additional um, you know other what, pages so would fine. be, but this so is like the whole of Prince Alfred. for me. Okay, there are 67 all together. Correct. And they come in annually and get yes, a Yes, they do, yes. And what's the, what's the fee for $110 for the yearly permit. Okay. And in terms of um, enforcement around, you know, making sure that they're not selling to minors, what does our enforcement program look like? We do not have it. MOHA, Mass Health Offices Association, is the one that does our stings for us. And they have done to date from January 1st till um, April 30th, actually, they have done 45 stings, one sold. I'm sorry, one what? Only one has, has sold. They only, one had violations okay, of selling. Okay. Out of 45, just one has sold. Okay. From January 1st to April 30th. Good, excellent. Yeah. And um, do we pay them to do that? No. Okay. And they do a percentage or are they? They take a list from us and they do all the stores that hold a license with us. And okay. they do, they choose how they're gonna do it and who gets done when. And then they notify me okay. if there's been any violations. Excellent, so every place that has a tobacco license will get a visit Correct. at some point during the year. Correct. Excellent, Correct. and that's every year? Yes, okay. yes, like I have 2018 okay. in front of me as well. Excellent. There was 77 there in okay. 2018, seven sold for the entire year, seven had sold. But from the January 1st to the April 30th date, <coughs> same as now, we had four sell. So it's dropped down. At the last um, meeting of the Waltham Partnership for Youth Coalition, mm -hmm. um, Councilor Vidal and I heard that it, at some point, I don't have the timing on this, um, but that a couple of the students from the Trailblazers actually came <coughs> to one of your meetings? They did. And, and, and what did they present on? All right, members, do you recall? Because they were here last year, wasn't it? They showed us the devices and the flavors, and they mm -hmm. had a job with them. And kids who were involved with it in the high school, especially. I mean, the, the, the students have been doing, again, an awful lot of work um, just around education. Right, to get the information out there. And um, you know, they they came into a city council meeting um, <coughs> not that long ago and, and spoke on a proposed ordinance. Um, they didn't speak as members of the group, they're not allowed to do that. But they spoke as individuals and they spoke in a neutral position, but they um, they talked about the issue of vaping and the proliferation of the flavored um, tobacco products and and why that is of a concern, right? And, um, and basically, they're looking to city leaders who have some level of responsibility to ensure that we're doing our very best to protect the youth in, in the city. Um, have, has has the board discussed since you know? Again, I understand it was a former director and 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 one big thing was adopted out of, out of five. 
um, as the board discussed, perhaps adopting um, any additional regulations that would, you know, again, truly limit the sale of flavored tobacco products in the city? Um, no, they have not. Okay. As of today, they have not done it. We have a board meeting tomorrow evening. Okay. All right. Um, before you adopt a regulation, is there a public hearing on it? What is your process? I have not been involved. Unfortunately, I have not been involved when these rights were put into place. John, the former director, did everything on his own, and I was handling other issues going on in the office. So he did this and pretty much dealt with the board. So I believe he did. Okay, yeah, we please. Did, yes, please. Uh, we did when we changed the age to 21. We did have a public hearing. We invited every person, every establishment that sold within the city to come. Uh, expressed their concerns and I believe three showed up and none of them were actually against it because they said we don't really want the kids in anyway. So we did have that public hearing before we proceeded with that right. resolution. So you've got a process somewhat like ours. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So the, the legislation that um, is currently making its way through the council process would require that any additional um, smoke shops or vaping shops that they come in for a special permit. Um, currently, they're unrestricted. And uh, there's the potential for the proliferation um, without some sort of a, of a local ordinance. So um, the clerk of this committee, who's also the clerk of ordinances and rules, reminded me earlier um, that did have a first reading on the floor of the full council. It had a public hearing. It had a first reading. It then went back to ordinances and rules committee and it is, um, it, has it been sent to the law department? Is that where you said it was? Or, or it's gonna be sent tonight? It came back, their review okay. came back today. Okay, all right. So it, again, the committee will look at it, make any changes and adjustments and um, you know, hopefully that would be something that might, might help in this effort. Um, so I guess now um, I invited Mr. Wilson here because he too, going back, um, was a member of this group. Now um, a different representative comes. Um, but if you could uh, you know, just sure. talk about, from your perspective, what is Waltham status? And, and what are some of the things that, that we have, we could do. What are our opportunities to do better for our kids? Sure. I'm going to stand up just because I, because I'm a cold, yeah, I have and impaired hearing. <laughs> so if I look at people, it's better. So I gave, a, I, I, gave, I provided a handout to the can council. I, okay. Can, 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 we, can, I, can we get them to the members of the Board of Health as well? So while that's happening, I'll give you a little background just on the program itself. So the Massachusetts Tobacco Control Program has been around for 25, 26 years. It has three goals. One was to keep kids from starting. What, second was to encourage uh, current smokers to quit. And the third was to maximize smoke-free living as much as possible, restaurants, bars, and the So over the years, we've now come out with two sample regulations. One has to do with sales, and that's the first piece of paper on the flip side is the secondhand smoke regulation. I'll go through the sales one, it looks complicated, but I try to fit a lot of data on one piece of paper. So uh, this is what we, this is this checklist on the cover and we hand it out to boards of health. I should note 351 cities and towns. We have one town that goes the bylaw route, seven cities that go the ordinance route, and everybody else does the health regulation route. And so this is the, uh, the checklist we go through with the board of health typically and say, do you want it or don't want it? And we craft, we draft the uh, draft, we craft the draft. The listing on the left side are those, the number of cities and towns that have adopted it. On the far right side are those abutting towns that, uh, that don't have that policy. Newton, Lexington, Belmont, and Watertown before I list it. So you'll see a, a handful of these are, um, One's been uh, now in state law, number 16 is already done. You shouldn't have any pharmacy selling tobacco or vape products today. And then where it says the, the two places that circled, you already have. But uh, Waltham is frankly far behind the eight ball on, on all this regulation. 
So I, uh, typically what happens is I go before a Board of Health, they invite me out, and I can talk to either the director themselves or the whole Board of Health as to, and, and go through that whole explanation as to what these are. And just as a summary of what there are, is I gave you a tobacco policy summary list. It kind of tracks the two uh, checklists, and it goes through and gives you what the policy is, what the intent is, what the public health rationale is, and the number of cities and towns that have done it. And on the flip side, is that secondhand smoke regulation. We have a 2004 smoke-free workplace law in place already, and it was updated recently to, uh, to include that no vaping can take place in smoke-free locations, and it fixed a really hodgepodge, poorly written, uh, as to what to do with schools. So today, no public or private school can have smoking or vaping on their school grounds, buildings, or in their buses by anybody at any time. So it's been nice, nicely cleaned up. But these represent common places where cities and towns go beyond the state law and say that these places also need to be smoke free. And you'll see on the left again, those city, the number of cities and towns have adopted this. And number 12 is now in the new state law, so it's really not necessary to, to uh, put it into a local regulation. We, rep we recommend that uh, cities and towns have these two separate regulations. That way you're giving one regulation to a retailer and they need to understand that. And then you can hold on to the other one for secondhand smoke when you generally get questions for it. But this is a this is a state law that is pretty well run and you know get, gets a lot of compliance. But it's just easier to have a thinned out version for the for the sale for the retailers themselves. Two of these things that have been, uh, have been court tested is number ten, ban uh, banning of blunt wraps. Boston did that years ago and got sued. They won at the state's highest court. And then the flavor policy that the council referenced. Uh, was approved by the Federal Court of Appeals uh, for a Providence Ordinance, and we're in the same federal court district, so it's valid. What's happening right now is that when, I, when you list, when you see that the uh, cities and towns around you that have the policy right now, it's the original policy that was court tested. What you're hearing about in Boston, Brookline, uh, what Somerville's being sued for is the original policy exempted out mint, menthol, and wintergreen, and uh, some of them unexempted those, and they're in a lawsuit, and Boston's contemplating doing the same. Okay. So, how many communities in the Commonwealth restrict the sale of flavored tobacco products? That's right, uh, whatever number that is. I see a lot of numbers. Nine. 147. Okay. And of the 147, five have gone beyond it and put in a stronger policy. Okay. So, 147. All three large cities have. All right. And I know that a lot of our neighbors uh, restrict, right? Yes. Newton, Watertown, Belmont, uh, the only Lexington. One, uh, Lexington doesn't have it. I should say Lexington is a little behind in their regulation. Okay. Their last right, update was about Lexington. four years ago, and then okay. their long term okay. health so, director moved on, and they just haven't updated their regulation. I didn't include Weston because they probably have two vendors. <laughs> Okay, but Belmont restricts. Yeah. Watertown restricts, and Newton restricts. Yes, it does. Okay. Um, so 146 communities, 147 communities. Do the majority of them restrict through um, through something that their board of health does? or through something that their legislative body does? Again, almost always it's uh, board of health. Uh, Newton is an ordinance though. I will say. Okay. And so the details of the flavor restriction uh, are that um, if, it, if it's flavored and there's a way to determine whether or not, you know, there's, there's a, you can have a cocoa flavored cigar, but cocoa is also an ingredient in the, the secret recipe for a Marlboro cigarette, but these are characterizing flavors. So it's that anything that you go to a convenience store and see behind the counter that's very colorful, those flavors would be included. So that's how that gets determined. And then the people, the store types that are available, are allowed to continue selling are hookah bars, cigar bars, which I don't think Waltham has either one of those. They require a DOR permit from the state. Uh, tobacconists and vape shops, but there are requirements. They have to be adult only. They have to be a specialty shop, basically. And so, for example, as I was saying earlier, I'm on the Malden Board of Health. We have 58 vendors, and of that 58, One's a tobacconist, five are vape shops. So we keep a close eye on, the benefit is that we can keep a close eye on those vape shops, make sure kids don't get in, 
back in March, we did actually suspend a vape shop for seven days, and basically they had to shut down the business for seven days because they didn't sell anything else, so they really had to shut down. It, sends a it sent a clear signal to our others in Malden that they don't sell the kids. Okay. Um, we do have cigar bars in the city. Where you can smoke cigars in the in the location? Yeah, one. There's only like 22 statewide. Oh, uh, <laughs> a cigar shop, a tobacconist. Yeah. Yes. A cigar bar is where you go in and actually sit down, get a drink, and smoke. No, 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 no. Boston only actually so has one cigar. It's more than bar. just a cigar. Yeah. That's how yeah. rare it's they are. It's more than just say, because what I know. Um, yeah. More than just being able to smoke a cigar on the premises. Okay. Right. Tobacconists, okay. you can. It's it's governed in a different way, but right. tobacconists can. Mm -hmm. But we do have cities and towns, and it's on that list. We have a lot of cities and towns that say no smoking, even in tobacconists, because they're oftentimes they are in a multi-use building, and their smoke goes into either businesses or homes upstairs or businesses on the side. So um, every summer it, it comes up, we've got, you know, Concerts on the Common here, wonderful program of people turn out, and um, you know, there's always a few people who yeah. want to have a cigarette, and um, invariably they, you know, they want to have it near somebody that is bothered by it. Um, but Waltham currently doesn't um, restrict um, smoking tobacco on any of our municipal properties but now you say the state law takes care of our schools yeah so the schools so the are state are law covered. takes care of the schools. municipal buildings inside are inside but not outside. outside so our parks aren't covered right um, so you'll see on the on my second checklist number three talks about buffer zones around right. municipal parks 15 to 25 is pretty common then the next four parks and playgrounds that aren't school right. on school grounds athletic fields that aren't school grounds beaches and so we, and then we do have cities and towns that actually will go far as list something like, con, you know, summer concerts on the common, shall you know they list it right by that name to make sure that that event is smoke free. Okay. So you could do that too. But is it unreasonable to say that your municipal properties certainly exempting sidewalks and you know that people need to yeah. travel on to whatever? Um, but the, the municipal grounds, I mean, a park. People bring kids to their park. Yeah. It, no, it's, I, it's I mean, doable. You, and technically, Boston uh, made their smoke park, their park smoke free several years ago. If you go to the Commons today, I'll tell you, you'll smell pot. <laughs> but you probably won't see anybody smoking a cigarette. So putting up signage uh, gets you about 90% compliance. The smoker sees it, puts out their cigarette. A non-smoker sees the smoker and says, oh, did you see the sign? And so you get a, it gives you a lot of traction to get towards being smoke free. So you indicated that of, you know, um, the communities who have regulations, the majority of them adopt their regulations through the Board of Health as opposed to through their legislative body. Why is that? Uh, the state law provides <coughs> that boards of health, they pass reasonable health regulations. It's actually a, a broad standard. They, uh, the courts overwhelmingly side with boards of health as to what's reasonable. Uh, and that's actually part of the sum of a lawsuit. And uh, so they don't, uh, Boards of Health don't need to have a hearing, but we do recommend <coughs> this topic that they do hold here, and it's great that they have it for age 21. And then after they put it in place, uh, a summary needs to go in the newspaper, be published in the newspaper once, and then it can go into effect. So the benefit for us for tobacco control, because it is a constant whack-a-mole game, Boards of Health regulations are easier to go in and amend if there's a loophole or an update needs to happen. So places like, you know, Needham updates the regulation anyway. <laughs> you know, they, they really keep up to date with what, what, what's happening, the changes that are happening. Vape use in kids, what's being sold in retailers. So that's one of the reasons that's helpful. Yeah, right. those, those are my questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you all for coming tonight. Well, my questions are actually for you, and then I will um, reach out to the Board of Health here. So, this is all great and explains what you've done in other municipalities. For, I mean, you may have commented that Waltham was somehow behind in its regulations. So I think when you make a statement like that, it might be qualified. So for, in order for the city of Waltham to somehow conform to where other um, municipalities are, how would you recommend 
a, a city like Waltham or others that may not be where they need to, to be with a certain limited set of resources, where does right. a city like Waltham get started? So it would be uh, having a discussion with the Board of Health or the Health Director on our own to go through what makes sense to do here. Uh, what do you recommend to be? Where does this is the, these are the recommended policies. Okay, everything okay. on this checklist. Yes. Yeah, so we do have cities and towns that have everything. So Boston is only missing the capping. Boston is everything else. And what we do also recommend when you're in an unfunded community like Paul Fingers, you don't get money from the state to do the, the kind of uh, the uh, enforcement <coughs> part. We do recommend that you look at the your annual fee and see that it reflects the cost of enforcement. So I want to go back a minute because I think saying everything is also not really advised. I mean, we need we need good advice here, nope. a way to get started. And like literally to bring you into that, so, I don't know what other counselors are motivated by, but I want a roadmap and be able to have something actionable for the city. Right. Otherwise, this becomes a waste of time. So, we've, so okay, I've, let me I've ask met, my question, sure. if I may. So if our target, our purpose and intent is to restrict tobacco access to our youth from this checklist, where does municipality get started? Where do you where do you start? Where would you start first here, knowing what walking has and doesn't have? Right. So uh, some things are smaller bore, and once you put them in, they <coughs> don't require much enforcement. This is where I want. Okay. It. Yes. But they also don't have the same impact. So we could step in. But that is that is the start. Right. So, so um, a cessation requiring a cessation sign. That is provided by the state and says, here's the 800 number. So every time a smoker buys a pack of cigarettes, they see the cessation sign. Okay. Um, make sure that they can't get their permit if they owe money to the city for something else. Just, you know, that I think a lot of cities appreciate that, even though it doesn't have much of a public health benefit. Uh, capping the number of uh, uh, permits is very helpful. Um, and not only is it helpful to limit the number of places that sell, but also businesses don't mind the cap either because they don't mind being in the exclusive club of 67, like your liquor stores, right? right. So that usually we, doesn't get much at, fight. Have you seen cities um, cap at the Board of Health, or is that typically an ordinance? Board of Health. Okay, thank you. So number seven and eight. Uh, eight is actually a fairly new uh, policy, but number seven is pretty popular and it says no new retailers within 500 feet of the school. Okay. So I can, if I own a store and you want to buy it, you can buy it and you can capture my permit. It's not meant to disable the sale of my store, but it's for no new places within 500 feet of the school. So that's a proactive way of getting with it. Bang, blunt wraps is a good deal. Uh, it's court tested. Usually the police chiefs like it because almost always a blunt wrap is a sheet of reconstituted tobacco. It's always flavored, always used for drugs. So getting them out of your stores is not a bad deal. And so that's an easy enforcement because you just walk in and see if they have it or not, right? 11 is easy uh, and it's also covered by that same Providence Ordinance lawsuit. Uh, you already have no self-service displays. Vending machines, you limit them, but you can get rid of them. You shouldn't have any. The federal law does not allow a vending machine anywhere that kids ever go into. So even a private club that opens up their doors for a shower or a birthday party can't have a vending machine. So that's an easy thing. 15 is easy too. It's it's, pre it's preemptive. 17 is uh, no tobacco or vape sales in educational institutions. You have two colleges in town, and this also would affect um, hair. I don't know what you have. So hairdressing schools, that yeah. kind of thing. It, it may be a fact right now that neither of the two colleges sell tobacco on the campuses, but it sends a good message because while we're, we see the explosion of vaping in high school and, and middle schools, college kids also are, are, are part of this epidemic. Okay. So those are some of the, so, some, so there are, I will admit, like sometimes I go into a small town that's unfunded and then they're like, we want to do stuff, but <laughs> they're like, okay, well here's the, and the easier level. Well, we have the whole board of health here, Correct. or most of the membership one's here. Missing. Right, one is missing. This might be helpful because these are things you can do without having to increase your right. resources or to bring on enforcement for, right. for policy changes. Right? Correct. And so, and I should also note, while we can't do enforcement, I certainly at MMA and Mass Association of Health Boards and Mass Health Officers Association, uh, you know, we can hand, hold your hands as much through this as possible. We can. We have a template for how to do a public hearing, the public hearing notice. We have a template for the required summary afterwards. We have a template for what goes out to retailers for, to notify that they've done this. 
So we do try to make it as easy as possible for those unfunded communities. Okay. And then what are some of the recommendations that require a little bit more resourcing? What are the heavier... Resources? The two that uh, are, it would be the flavor policy. Um, it's the one that we feel is probably the most effective. Uh, and it's the one the tobacco industry hates the most. <laughs> so. um, uh, and then the second one is minimum pricing for cigars. At the height of the recession, the federal government gave out money to big cities to do one inventive policy. Providence did the flavor policy, and Boston did the minimum pricing on cigars. So what it says is um, a single cigar has to be sold for at least two fifty, and any multi pack for at least five dollars. This doesn't infringe anybody <coughs> who smokes fine cigars, right? It's it doesn't touch that dollar, that price doesn't touch those uh, high end cigars. But it does get rid of those 25 and 50 cent grape cigars that convenience stores probably have here in all okay. So, you know, as municipalities have stepped into this phased program that you talked about tonight, and this is exactly what I was looking for, so thanks for sure. following my line of questioning. What kind of impact did you see from like a, a lower end or one or two municipal policies that the public health was working with with something that you kind of layered in? What kind of reduction in youth? Smoking in general, vaping and others, have you seen in other towns? Because you have, you have the, the long pole in the tent view. So we do. What, what uh, do it's have? tough though, because I'll say we seldom do a single policy, right? Sure. So it's hard to, so from a data point of view, it's hard to do. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you, if you talk to Newton Public Health, they'll say we get word that kids go to Waltham for cigarettes. Okay. <laughs> you know, so, so everybody's doing their own whack a mole. But we live in a tightly uh, tight area of the country with small cities and towns where kids figure a way to get out. In fact, that vape shop in Malden that we suspended, how we found out about it was a mother complained because our kid in Wakefield was, she saw the Uber bill. The kid was taking an Uber from Wakefield to Malden to buy vape. Because he learned that this one place was the weak link. So, you know, so that's, so, um, can I, can I ask another question? We have question? historically low smoking rates, but yeah. this vape thing, the spe specifically Juul brand vaping, really uh, blew up faster than we could ever have controlled it. And do you ever see like synergistic programs where the Board of Health and the education programs and others kind of overlay? Can you talk about how a community like Waltham can build those synergistic sure. programs? Sure. You, you have a great youth group right now at the high school. And so they're kind of like the, the ideal place to go for those kind of uh, conversations. We have uh, a woman named Mary Cole. She couldn't make it tonight. She, uh, she runs a community partnership in Paul is one of the cities that she uh, takes care of. So she's available to do the kind of conversations with uh, local officials, school officials, PTOs, to talk about um, you know, what, the, what epidemic we're seeing now in schools and what the, and what kind of specific youth program targets? Because, I mean, a lot of times you can restrict, 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 but, but people find a way, kids find a way, right? So so what what other engagement do you recommend at the youth level? Like, is it working with um, the Waltham Partnership for Youth who are working in the high school, the Waltham Trailblazers? Are these youth programs and youth-led groups are really the touchstone of, of get, educating youth on, on the dangers? And I also think it would be helpful to just uh, show at least some uh, moral support to your principal and principals and superintendents. They're the ones who are really trying to figure out what to do. Uh, they all have a, bo a box full of tools. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they're the ones who are uh, busy trying to figure out what to do. So it's helpful if they, can, if they just get the citywide support. And for the first time in my doing this job, the last six hearings I've been to, five have had principals or superintendents show up and testified because it really is a crisis for them. Okay, and then as, as municipalities restrict, and let's say Waltham here, there's leaders here who would take and, and run with some of these policies, is there anything, you know, um, and, and I started in prep for tonight just going on the internet, I mean, there is sales out there where kids, despite all of this, yeah. will go seek some of this on the internet. You don't have to get into an Uber to get it. No. Um, what are What is the Commonwealth doing at a, state level to restrict those delivery of those materials and such what, what are what are we doing at the commonwealth yeah level? It's, it, it goes beyond local control but yeah. the, the attorney general has uh given us cease and desist orders to four companies on the internet for not having a proper uh, adult sale controls on their website okay 
and she'll continue doing that. She's very much in our corner on this. Okay. But you know, the internet's a tough thing to do. So the the recently former uh, FDA commissioner, he had uh, asked Juul and four other of the biggest uh, vape companies to provide uh, ways to improve their uh, website and to keep the deliveries from going to kids. It doesn't. It's tough to do if you're. It's an internet website that's run out of the cellar of somebody's yeah. house. Yeah. Uh, but uh, and Jewel has made some inroads into this, but you know we certainly see this. We see, we do definitely see the internet is still a problem. But we also run into the problem, and that the compliance checks you were speaking of are FDA compliance checks that are done by the feds. So MHOA tells you when you have a failure. Uh, and so, but we so while we do our compliance checks and we send in kids that don't you know they don't live in Waltham, so they're strangers to the store. And uh, they, we don't let them lie. <laughs> you know, we, we have a very strict protocol. We still run into the problem of uh, kids who know the store owners who, and the store owners will sell to them. So we've now had, had a few uh, public hearings where the stores have said, we'll volunteer to only sell one package of pods a day to a customer. In the realization that somebody, an adult or a kid, is walking in and buying four or five pod, packs of pods, which is you know, uh, 20 to 25 of the little pods um, and distributing them at the high school. So, you know, so that's a problem for us. But we do recognize that the city of Waltham can only really control what's happening in the city of Waltham and not the internet. Okay. Just to, I don't know if you've ever seen it, Jewel. I should have started with this. Thank you. So this is a Jewel. Uh, if you see people walking down the street and like coughing into their hands, so they're actually jeweling. It's this way it goes into your mouth. This is the pod. It's worth, that has a pack of cigarettes worth of nicotine in it. And it goes in there. So kids don't necessarily all need to have this device. They'll just have this, carry this around, and I'll take mine out. You put yours in, you put yours in, I put mine back in, and you're good to go. This is how you, read, it, you juice it up on a computer. That's why kids will oftentimes ask the librarian of the public library or the high school library to get the loaner computer out so they can juice up the jewel. And then this is what the pods look like when you buy them. Green is uh, mint, and so it comes in a pack of four. And, and this pack of four costs $20 at the community store mall. Just so you know what we're talking about. And so when we talked about, when you were just referencing a possible policy <coughs> change or restriction of the total number that a location can sell in pods, you were talking about. Well, that's right, correct. Uh, and you know that's something that's really hard to enforce. But it does go, just go to show you that the uh, you know the store owners themselves recognize that somebody's walking in and buying a bunch of those, okay. and then reselling them somewhere. And you are available, um, should the Board of Health or sure. yes, to, to to sit down and consult on how to properly you know, do a public hearing and ways to get this out and kind of using best practices of the statement that you had at the beginning. So Moha did um, uh, stings last year of every single facility that sold tobacco products, correct? Correct. And out of that, was that over the course of the year? Is that quarterly? Is that every six months? Is it annually? The numbers that I gave, I don't know how they decide to, to do their stings. Sure. It's, they don't have to notify me for that. But the numbers that I gave, 77, were from January 1st to December 31st. Okay. That was 77 stings that were done, where seven of them sold. That's throughout that year. Okay. The four was just in the time frame of January 1st to April 30th, okay. which is the numbers I have just for this year. So one of the education pieces we have is, is like, we can still do that, right? But, but okay. the consequences of what happens when you sell can be kind of up through policy. Right now, do you know what the restrictions are? I mean, so if, if someone sells to a youth under the age of 21, mm -hmm. what are the actions that are imposed um, on the store? I'm sure some of it is education and then there's some consequences. 
I know yes. that um, eventually there's a civil penalty, I believe, that right. happens. They first get their warning notice, and then they get penalty if they decide to sell again. And I just don't know the steps on that, if it's right. 200, 100, 200, They are higher than local ones. Or 200, but 500. They do allow a warning the first time. They so do. this is what the F FDA report looks like. It okay. lists, you can go online and find this. It lists the stores. You put in a new zip code and it'll come up with all this. Stores and where they're at, what they sold, what the actual product is they sold, okay. and so. But they do have when they get into a re, when they repeat, they mm -hmm. get into high fines. Correct. It's like a like a store in Chicopee that I got a ten thousand dollar fine. Right. Our fines are typically small. 100, 200, 300, and we recommend these attempts to uh, permit suspension. Okay. And one mm -hmm. last question: Prior to Mohawk doing this, did the city of Waltham ever conduct these stings themselves? through the Board of Health or through the Police Department or some other enforcement agency? We did. The Health Department did many, many years ago. Um, I don't recall how long. It was in the early 90s. We had a grant that was from the state, and we had John Langley and um, Jim Monahan who were doing our things for us, working with the, the students at the schools, getting them together and then bringing them out to to um, find out if they're going to sell or not. Yeah. But once the grant ran, ran out, that was the end. So we, you shifted to MOHA, and that's incorporated Correct. into what you do today? Correct. Thank you for all you do. Thank sure. you for coming here. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Um, Councilor Mackin. Oh, President. Thank you. Um, I have two quick questions for the Councilors. Go. Um, when is one of the regulations written in the city of Walker? The ones that currently have. I believe 2017 they were finalized. Mm -hmm. uh, they started, for, I think, for the, for the new they started on the 2016. But they were finalized in 2017. And if the, one of those jewels will last how long? That I do not know. Oh, DJ probably knows here. better. So here's the regulations. Off your website. How, but how long, right, we have those, but how long does it, he's asking how long the you know, that is. It, this is the difficult part because even a, uh, even an adult smoker who thinks they're going to switch to this because it's better for their health mm -hmm. may actually become becoming more nicotine dependent mm -hmm. than uh, otherwise because the smoker knows how many they smoke by the number of sticks, right? Well, one but for one bottle last a day? It can last a day. Mm -hmm. If you're a teenager, you could pound through it in an hour. Okay. You know, some people might have it last them several days. So if they only have found one violation um, in the city in the last sting operation and they're pounding through three a day, where are they getting it? Where they've got to be another source that we're not discussing here right now. I do think because this is hundreds of them that they right. I think it comes down to three things. Internet. Um, it does come down to the known kid to a school store store owner. And also, uh, you know, our funded communities do rely on the FDA checks, but they also do their own. And our and FDA does a conservative uh, compliance check. We recommend our local programs, you know, do a, now and then do a Saturday night at 9 o'clock at night one. If you do it right after school, the stores know that the kids are <laughs> Just That's when the compliance checks, the FDA get done. So we do know that... Uh, you know, when their guard is down. Majority is internet? I wouldn't say majority. Um, plurality. <laughs> yeah. All the above. Now, is the 21, is that a federal regulation we have, or state regulation, or city ordinance? We adopted it before it was actually um, through the state. So we've been doing this. The state finally. Uh, caught up with us, I yes. guess, well, I can yes. say nicely, but we, it's in our regulations for Could the 21. city, and this might not be a question to answer, could the city make it like alcohol and make it illegal for anyone under the age of 21 to possess this, just like alcohol? Yes. I believe so. I, I don't see why they couldn't. <coughs> Council, will we kind of have some questions? Thank you. Yes, yeah, um, thank you. What is the average price of a pack of cigarettes? Pack of marbles around ten dollars. And what is that tax rate? Tax that three dollars and fifty one cents. So and sales tax. Four pods at twenty dollars per excise tax or five dollars. What's is that a tax rate? Is the same? Is that no? It has it has no excise tax on it. Though there is likely to be one imposed this year by the legislature. It was both in the governor's budget and 
the speaker wants to do something on it. So it's just sales tax. It's just the sales tax. Do you think this excise tax is going to make a dent into the? It should. I mean, we do. We've always found that price. People I mean, are yeah, price the price of a pack of cigarettes is, is insane. So I, I did it's current the lawsuit. Or people catch an issue. So we hope um, it does. Tobacco is it legal at any level? Federal, state, local? Is it illegal? Yeah. Uh, no. Do you see it becoming? <coughs> So with you know not seeing it become legal, do you think there comes a point when all of these regulations, I mean, I'm sure there's fight back now, but is there come a point where people are going to say enough's enough to let people run a business? You know, you know to back up, uh, tobacco is becoming less and less important to these stores because fewer and fewer people are smoking. Yeah. Vaping is actually saving them. We would actually love to see only those specialty shops selling all tobacco would be a would be a great step forward. That like liquor, you had to go to certain places to get it. That it wasn't on every corner. Mm -hmm. uh, sixty-seven places is a lot. I don't know how many liquor stores you have, but it, I'm sure it's not sixty-seven. Ninety-one places where you can buy alcohol. Hmm. Ninety-one liquor stores. Rent. We take. Not just no. Not no, all. That's right. I think. It's because we we're out of the business because yeah. of vending machines, we're out of restaurants. <laughs> so. Um, so we had a town try to ban it completely. It didn't work, so they, they backed down. Um, so I mean, this is still a product that kills half the people who use it nationwide. Um, it's for the first time. I think last year was the first time that opioid deaths exceeded tobacco deaths. So it's something that we, you know, we would like to see continue. We have the lowest smoking rate in high schools now that we've ever seen. Yeah. It's like six, seven percent, which is phenomenal. Yeah, absolutely. Unfortunately, the uh, vaping rate is back to what it started at when I started this job. Um, kind of going to the marijuana. As marijuana becomes <coughs> legal and people push and see that, um, I couldn't tell you the difference between a jewel and a marijuana vape pen if you. You know, two in front of me, million dollars we got right, 50-50 chance, I have no idea. Um, I just assume everyone's smoking weed now when I see those pens, to be quite honest uh, with you. No. But, uh, what, like, <laughs> like, where is that? It, I mean, it's just, are there... Are there... Uh, I would recommend, honestly, because if you really want to do a, a quick phone call, call your high school principal and talk about THC pods. Oh, Because uh, yeah. that's, uh, he'll know more than me. I mean, yeah. I, I do know that we had uh, the Wall Street <coughs> principal said that of his 16 expulsion hearings, 14 had to do with THC pods that were being used in a jewel. But still, that big part of that. Oh, do so you call that right in the jewel, huh? Uh, well, kids go on YouTube and figure out how to put it. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. And I guess that's it for that. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and again, I want to thank everybody for coming in. So, again, just in case people weren't clear, the motivation here, this came from um, the work with the Waltham Partnership for Youth Coalition, um, the, the students, the trailblazers. I interestingly enough, because they get federal funding, they are not allowed to come in and advocate for a particular policy, right? So they, they walk a fine line, um, but they have spent a lot of time educating, right? Educating their, their peers and educating the adults on the coalition and, and basically then looking to, you know, the leadership to say, okay, what can be done? What can you do? What should your role be? Um, this, this was good, and again, I so appreciate people coming in tonight. I think it's sort of, at least put out some baseline information for everybody to understand. Um, again, I personally don't care what adults do, but if adults have a role in protecting kids, I do care about that. Um, and it's not so much, you know, it's not a pack of cigarettes that an adult is going and buying. What, what I've heard from the youth as I've attended these meetings, it's the flavored tobacco products that they feel are being specifically targeted toward you, and it's the vaping. Those are, those are the issues. Um, 
it's my intent to table this matter here. Um, I, I, I certainly um, know that we've got a great director, good members of the Board of Health. Um, I would, you know, encourage you to you know, maybe have the connection that's that's been offered and um, make a determination as to, you know, again, that's, that's your role. Um, should we be doing more from your perspective around these issues? And uh, we'll just sort of wait and see a little bit. Um, again, I think that there's a role for you all, a greater role, and then there's some things that need to be done by the so again, thank you all for coming in. And with that, I need to make that five, on the five, table. Five, five, yeah. five, 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 Two gentlemen, uh, Langley and Monaghan, um, Jimmy Monaghan was my uncle, and we called them Stachy, Stachy and Hutch. They had badges. <laughs> they would have done it for free. <laughs> they would have. They went around and they read, it was like a they scene from uh, the, the Dog the Bounty Hunter. They went in and they read in the riot they act did. and they pulled them outside the store onto the sidewalk and they were read them good. and then, then they came back as their buddy and tried to help them and work with them and I, you know, I would imagine if, if whatever, however the children are getting them, if you had some retired volunteers mm -hmm. with badges, they could, I, I think it was, it was pretty, it was entertaining to see. I remember it was 10, 15 years ago. I remember, I remember very well. <laughs> they had those badges and, you know. Um, no personal experience. So, <laughs> I, yeah, I figured I'd just leave you with that. And, with that said, um, I need to lay the matter on the table. Thank you. Um, Thank you all read the motion. Council of Blankford on the table. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Yes, have it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I move to take the uh, matter of the paving resolution from the table. Council of Blank moves to take the matter of the 1725 paving resolution off the table. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Yes, I move to. Um, or send out to, for approval with the recommendation for approval to what am I doing, Joe? To the full council. Uh, to recommend that it be forwarded. Uh, okay. The recommendation is that it be council. forwarded to the ordinances and rules committee. That's what's in the full council, right. correct? Yeah. Right. Okay. And with that said, it would be which documents? It would be the. It would be the It would be the whole bottle of wax. It would be the ordinance. It would be. Uh, the request, it would be everything that the ordinances and rules committee needs to see to decide how we should work. I believe it was um, to our opinions and a recommendation from the chairman of public works. Are you done, right? Okay, so basically it was um, Council White's recommendation was the, it was two of our opinions. So the law of the so the ordinance, the draft ordinances, and the resolution. Right? Yes, and there was a um, there was a um, response, an email response from um, the director Chase and uh, concerns that then the law department responded to that. Okay, so why don't we just say Every resolution day. and all the company. Perfect. One day. Yeah. Oh, well, well, <laughs> okay, I just didn't want to miss yeah. director Chase's email because he has a condition. Okay. So I'll send that. Sure, the sense of the request. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Yeah. You guys have it. Yeah, you sent it up. To adjourn. To adjourn. I almost said, we have a table, we don't have any more. Aye. Aye. All those opposed? We are now adjourned at? 624. We made the motion to adjourn. 624.